What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to some GK Pro coverage. My name is Gabriel Dow, and I am here with one of our good friends and local Tulsa pros, Lauren Lewis. Hey, everybody. Hopping on the mic. Uh, we are out here at the Buffalo Run Disc Golf Tournament. Uh, this is the sixth annual tournament out here. We are in McAllister, Oklahoma at the Buffalo Run Disc Golf Course, one of my favorite park courses, I'd say. But uh, we got Coda Hatfield on the card, familiar face, along with Bo Tillman. We also have Austin Hannum out of Perry, Oklahoma, and Emerson Keith, another familiar face there. So pretty uh, pretty salty card here we got. So um, this course is absolutely beautiful, well taken care of. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, it's definitely well kept as far as uh, like park courses and, and things like that go. Yeah, um, hole one, this is a par four. It's 525 feet. Um, you have really two options here. You can take the big hyzer around the right side, or you can play it a little bit safer and throw the straight shot. Just kind of play it near that sidewalk to the basket, lay up and take your three. Um, that's really the only thing we got here. Yeah, um, definitely on this day, uh, the wind was coming out of the, the right side there. So the big hyzer was really uh, the best play, I think. Um, some people might try to do that turnover something, but uh, a lot of times that gets caught in the wind. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't here this first day, so I'm not quite familiar with everything that was going on. So glad glad we got you here to give us the insight. And we got Coda doing that big hyzer. That looks like a safer hyzer. He's not going for that one. Yeah, definitely just putting it in that landing zone. Yeah, and he ends up right there. Should be a pretty routine upshot for him. We got Bo on the tee. Same thing, big hyzer, smooth form, just putting it in that landing zone. Yeah, definitely one of the smoothest forms, I mean, really, yeah, out there so in, in the disc golf world because so he makes it look so effortless the way he throws that disc. Got Austin Hannum. This guy crushes. Okay, big run up. He might be going for it. Why not get aggressive off the first tee? Oh, see, there's that wind. Oh, my God. And that's turning straight over. That's not going to be in a fun spot. I don't I, I mean, couldn't, hopefully, I couldn't hopefully tell he's he got in over. I, I couldn't. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Emerson, Emerson Keith, Keith, yeah. The Texas Armadillo. I'm sure he'll be crushing out a hyzer as well. This is a safe hyzer. Yeah, yeah he's super not going for that. Super safe. That always happens, it seems like, when you see somebody throw and just dump one over, you're like, okay, well, I'm definitely not doing that. Yeah. It looks like Austin ended up out of bounds, so he's taking his way back here. Yeah. And, oh. So uh, we it caught looks it. like in, inside the circle there. Yeah. A really good recovery shot, really. Emerson Keith with that Bruins Justice. Yeah, you notice these guys are doing that, uh, <clears throat> that like flick with a, you know, more overstable kind of mid-range type mm -hmm. play. Well, except for Bo, I mean, he doesn't whip out the forehand too often, but I think the uh, flick play on that upshot plays with the wind a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Cause you said it was like right to left-ish, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can kind of rely on that, kind of batting the discs down instead of uh, catching that roll because, I mean, that's really the danger on the upshot and the putt here is, you know, hitting the cage or like hopping up and catching the roll straight down in the culvert. Right. Oh, wow. Like that. Wow. <laughs> exactly like that. You have to be kidding me. Wow. Yeah, and that's just what happens on this hole. It's it's pretty scary no matter where you're at for the putt. I mean, unless you got a drop in. Took no time. Just needed to put that in and go on to the next hole. Yeah, I'm sure he's frustrated after that one. Definitely... Don't want to start this hole with a bogey. Yeah, I mean, he honestly played the hole perfect. It's yeah, he really did. Maybe maybe a little first hole jitters or, yeah. or something going through the yeah. mind. 
Yeah, you almost prefer to be closer to that concrete um, just so you have that uphill putt instead of putting down to the basket because it's just so much more safer of a putt. Yeah, agreed. Um, but we are on to hole two. This is a par four, 705 feet. Uh, tell us about it, Lauren. Um, it's uh, long. It's a long hole. Yeah. You've got uh, two different shots, I guess, really off the tee. Um, there's a Mando left side, so you don't want to go near that. Looks like Coda's going to go straight. Uh, and roller. Oh, wow. roller. Wow. I did not see that coming. Yeah, the wind wasn't really the greatest play for the roller, but maybe, you know, he was must have practiced that or something and got a couple way up there. Yeah. I think this the is the other hyzer, play. Yeah. yeah. The big hyzer right here is probably the most common, especially mm -hmm. with that, that pushing wind. Yeah, exactly. And that's a safe spot right there. Yeah, it's interesting because um, usually you see these guys go for just the big turnover, but we've had Coda go for the roller and then Emerson throw the hyzer. So um, that wind is really affecting this shot off the tee. Um, I mean, as you can see there, Austin, that pushing wind just stabled that disc up too fast and he's going to be on that left side. Yeah, and then Bo correcting on that a little bit, probably throwing a disc a little more understable. Does that squeak through? It was close. Uh, I mean, not almost. a lot to do there. And then the footing in that little area after we've had a lot of rain is like standstill is yeah, yeah. standstill is really the way to go, and it's it's kind of hard to generate a lot of power from that. Yeah, and that's a good second shot from Coda, considering where he was at. He's gonna give himself a long look for the birdie. Go bow, shades on. And pulled that one a little right. God, that is another uh, slight miscue. I mean, it's kind of easy to do. And like I said, that downhill slope, a little bit of rain. Uh, I mean, there could have been some slippage on that shot. Definitely. This is looking perfect for, oh, it was looking perfect, uh, but that's well short of the basket. Oh, look at this. That just really needs to spike. And he's going to be in there. That that water right there is actually safe, so he'll be playing relief from behind there. And Bo doing a lot of the same. Yeah, he's going to be putting for five from down there. Smooth upshot for Coda. Yeah. And Emerson just laying up as well. Yeah, no no need to mess with that. Great putt from Bo, though. Yeah, that was, a, I mean, a really good comeback for, I mean, uh, you know, how rough the hole yeah, exactly. took a turn. You know, you kind of have that mental, the uh, mental dialogue going on really heavily after you make mistakes so right and missing that putt on hole one comes back to this one looking uphill got a possible headwind going on mm-hmm Coda making par little tap of the basket I know Coda does a lot of taps of the basket he does he does yeah I guess it's like his course karma he oh, just like that's go. just like all right just gonna give you a little tap. Well, thank you. Noted. Duly noted. Yeah, right? Maybe we should all start tapping the basket. Um, hole three. This is a par four, 390 feet. This is a very tricky hole. You're really just wanting to uh, get clear of these trees. Um, most of these guys are gonna be throwing the hyzer through the gap and hopefully get across this sidewalk to leave themselves with a uh, downhill jumper. Um, haven't seen too many people on this hole in the past get too close to. Uh, have the eagle opportunity but i mean it is there if you can rip it out there on the right line yeah it's uh it's definitely there coda lining up that middle gap looks like that might have been a mid-range i think uh he's just trying to focus on getting through the gap that's yeah. the that's the big issue on the hole when you first start yep 
Yeah, three is fantastic on this hole. Now, that had a lot of lift up. And he got up there. I st he's, he's still not, not really in contention for that eagle that we were talking about. But no. He's got a little downhill jumper, though. Austin pulling that one wide, and that looked like it kicked straight left. And he's going to find the out of bounds across the sidewalk. Oh, that's, that's a tough break. And, I mean, that's the, that's the hard part about that really tight gap off the tee. Fo puts out a nice shot there. Man, this wind must have been howling because these discs are really, like... Yeah, you're going to see a lot of crazy like things. wind bumps and, uh, yeah, like some, some pretty crazy stuff going on sometimes. It was also really choppy. It wasn't yeah. like a... It wasn't a consistent know. wind. Exactly. Nice little hyzer. Oh, and rolling to the basket. That's always nice. Great shot from Coda. Is that Bo running the basket? Oh, okay. Drop before. Drop in birdie for him. So Emerson giving it a little run. Oh, very nice putt. Nice par save from Austin. Keeping him in the mix there. Yeah, and that was that was up and down from OB, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. that's that's really good from where he was at. Oh yeah, very impressive. Emerson takes the birdie though. Coda, I'm sure, will follow suit here. Making sure to take his time. Doesn't want to rush anything. Yep. Keep Just keep that smooth groove that you've got going. Yep. Yeah, I found that's really the difference for... Oh, look at Coda. <laughs> Marking the disc for Bo. Speaking of course karma... <laughs> That's it right there. Um, hole four, this is a par three, 420 feet. What do you think about it, Lauren? Uh, I really like the hole. Um, there's one tree right off the tee pad that kind of gets in your head a little bit, but uh, the way this hole was playing was a lot of tailwind. You just want to throw a nice forehand out there, try to get it in the circle, or you can throw this backhand shot that Coda's lining up, try to get a, uh, a nice turnover. And you can really rip on it because you know that the tailwind's going to push you back. Because if you turn it over too much, you'll get into that pond. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's going to be too many of that uh, going toward the pond unless you're just throwing really understable. Yeah. That was a decent shot from Coda. Long look. There's that forehand we were talking about. This is looking nice from Emerson. A little short, actually. Faded out a little short. Yeah, it's tough to get that uh, that uphill and tailwind, uh, unless you're unless you're getting a little bit of flex on the disc. Exactly. And even though Emerson does have like a smooth, long forehand, it's just you know, it's hard with that tailwind for sure. Bo, no done. muss, no fuss, just throwing it out there. Now there's the little bit of flip that you wanted. He's probably going to be in the circle. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he should be right there inside the circle, about 25 feet by the rocks. Emerson just forced to lay up from down there. That's a really difficult putt. Yeah, the the green on this hole is really rough, especially if you're in this uh, this spot right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, he ran that. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> That's crazy. And oh, Bo. yeah, Tailwind straight got to him yeah. on that one. Just dropped it. Austin with the best look of the bunch for the birdie. Oh, and see, there's that there's that crosswind. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so easy. And, you know, it might not have been that way 20 seconds ago. Exactly. Could have been a left to right headwind. <laughs> you never know out here. All right, just cleaning up for the rest of the guys. Yeah, and this hole just creates a lot of, unless you really just smash something, creates a lot of layups right there. Oh, yeah. Circle two area. Definitely. Um, hole five, this is a par four, 480 feet. How do you play this hole, man? Um, well, 
I threw a I threw a Scooby the first two rounds. And oh, then, nice. Uh, decided to That's actually there. not do the Scooby on the last round. The wind was a little different. They did a did a switch up on us, but um, it's just got this dog leg right. You have to clear the first little gap area unless you have something big like probably this. Well, that wasn't as big as I thought it was. He was trying to come in and get a little more right. Yeah, and it looks like he might have gotten... Oh, he's right there in the middle. Yeah, he got through. Okay. That's not That's not too bad. Yeah. The more right you are off the tee, you're going to be much closer to the basket. Yeah. So you had Balto there sitting by the basket. <laughs> this is the play we're probably going to see the most of, I think. is. Yeah, uh, yeah, just that safe forehand up to the layup zone and... Yeah, and you'll notice there's a Mando sign right there on the right side. So you can't take, you know, a big spike hyzer or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to allow you to get crazy. And that's a great shot from Bo. He's going to have a clear look at the basket. I'm guessing over the trees on this. Oh, no. Playing it a little safer. Just laying up. And that got way down there. Yeah. Hopefully he got past the trees. So Kota with the worst shot of the group, but still in prime position, honestly. Bo with the rare forehand. Gets it up there about 20 feet. Bruins Justice for Emerson. And that thing has a magnet to the basket. Yeah, a lot of our guys throwing that that same, like, uh, overstable mid-range or putter forehand. On their second shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it's becoming a staple, I think, a lot more lately. Yeah. Emerson tapping in the birdie. We had a star birdie there. Yeah, and a uh, big shout out to Amy and Kent Cox at Basket, Ca Di Basket Case Disc Golf. Be sure to uh, check them out. Uh, we really appreciate them for sponsoring the coverage out here. Uh, but we are on to hole six. This is a par three, 348 feet. They have moved this one back from the original position. It used to be tucked here into the trees right here to the left where the drone's flying right now. But they have moved it back over this little creek. Um and it's it's really only about 50 feet further back and it makes the hole a lot more difficult yeah it definitely creates a lot of uh jump putts instead of you know just being parked for an yeah. easy birdie yeah you really have to throw a perfect shot and get that skip straight through the gap because there's really i mean if you're not skipping through the gap then you're looking at like a 40 to 50 foot putt like you said don't really see too many drives parked here. So Emerson with that rainbow lucid defender that he's been throwing. That is a new addition in his bag, and he is loving that thing. But it looks like he ends up in the creek there. Yeah, and then that's that's what happens when you don't get that skip right before. Those are good. He might get the skip. And then a tree kick into the creek, but yeah. yeah. Austin hanging it out there. Just a little bit too tight, and he is going to be well short of the basket there. Yeah, you kind of want more of like a, a flip-up hyzer. You're, you're not really wanting to just smooth it straight hyzer the whole mm -hmm. way. 
You want something that's going to flip through that gap a little bit. Yep. Oh. Oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> that's freaking wow. insane. Got the GK throwback. And through that little gap straight in front of him, too. Wow. Great <laughs> shot from Austin. Oh, that's so he good. He will take that. Moving under par with that one. I'm sure he's happy yeah, about that's that. That's always nice. Oh, yeah. We got Emerson from across the creek. Oh, almost draining wow, his. Yeah. He uh, almost almost got a really nice answer right there. Oh, and they're right next to each other in the creek. Right. Looks like Bo taking a little bit of casual relief so he doesn't have to step his foot in the water. Dakota for his three. Oh. So that was kind of nasty, but it was a little high. It I was. Mean, these baskets don't really like to to catch high at all. No, not at all. Emerson. Nice little par for Emerson there. Yeah. Uh, fortunate not to, you know, get a little roll or anything and go OB there. Mm -hmm. And Coda, that's an unfortunate bogey. Moving himself to two under par, and we are on to hole seven. This hole is a par four. It is 605 feet. You have a tight gap on the left that you have to hit. Um, once you're through that gap, it does not get any easier. Um, from there, you have a dead straight shot up to the basket. There's a lot of low-hanging branches that you have to be aware of, but uh, I mean, really, the goal here is to get through that gap initially off the tee. Right, definitely through the gap. Um, if you get far enough up there, you don't really have to contend with the trees too much, but if you just get through the gap, you know, 30, 40 feet, you're definitely gonna have that low ceiling to contend with. Austin, looks like he saw this one off a little bit, but gets through, and he's not gonna be in the best spot, but I mean, still but, nothing to complain about. Yeah, being on that right side kind of takes those trees out of uh, out of the equation. Yeah, especially for the forehand. Right. Emerson hitting that early tree. It's really tough to get all the way through there, especially with the kind of choppy wind, of course, that we've got going on. And Bo, this is looking like a great shot. Just needs to settle. And not the great greatest spot to settle yeah a little, little gonna be some awkward footing there yeah oh Coda kicking left it looks like he stayed inbounds but that is unfortunate yeah he uh put a lot of body english on that and just yeah. still wasn't able to really get it turned over no he's oh, going for that. a roller though is that gonna stand uh, was up? almost a really great play there yeah I can speak from experience. This is a tough shot. And that's going to be in the middle of the fairway. He should be able to lay up for the par pretty easily. Yeah, see, so look, he, he took all of those trees. Oh, almost. Oh, that was really freaking close. Yeah. It, it might have been a little short, but we'll see. Oh, no and problem. Boom. Skipped out a little long, but he didn't have as much trouble as I thought being next to that tree. Coda with a buttery forehand roller. That was really nice. Emerson trying to make the birdie. Safe run. Yeah, kind of a kind of a half go, not trying to get too crazy. Mm-hmm. And Bo. That's really that, that that tends to be Bo's miss. He either hits the pole or the cage or the band. Like it's he's not usually missing left or right. It's a nice issue to have. Right. You're gonna miss, you're still hitting metal anyway. Yeah. Emerson fixing the chains there. Saving the par. 
Dakota doing the same really nice bar save from where he was at. All right, hole eight. This is a par four. Another par four. This course is brutal. Uh, 519 feet. You have a tunnel shot off the tee, slightly uphill. You want to carry through the right side gap and then stay underneath these branches to make it to the clearing here. Ideally, you want to take a massive skip straight and down the hill to leave yourself with as short of an upshot as possible. So, um, yeah, it's a difficult hole. Yeah, right where the drone stopped there for, for just a moment. That's that's your good landing zone there. If you go any further, you uh, risk going into the creek, mm -hmm. which just makes the upshot a lot harder. That's where he might be going. Oh, no. A little, a little short. That's, that's probably perfect. Yeah, he's on that right side. He'll actually have a little forehand hyzer. And the, the right side's definitely the play for, for all the righties, I'm thinking, unless you want to get unless you want to get a little crazy and do that that forehand line on the left. Uh, definitely the, the way the drone flew was the best one. Yeah, this is looking real low from Bo. Yeah, the, the T pad there. the T pad being a little lower mm -hmm. uh, and the low ceiling just kind of forces that low shot sometimes. Yeah, it kinda plays with your head and you're just like, man. Got to hit this perfectly, or else I'm leaving myself with a 500-foot upshot. Uh, like Coda did there, except for that, that last little tree limb in the way. Yeah. Coda leaving himself inside the circle on the good side of the wind, though, so we've got a, a good right to left going here. You want to try to keep yourself on the right side of the basket. That way you've got that tailwind putt to the big like the tall tall basket yeah yeah the the fact that they raised this basket it makes this hole so much more difficult especially because you're so exposed to the wind on days like this yeah out definitely. There. <laughs> and so it's just so scary putting on an elevated basket so exposed to the wind for sure yeah it makes the and, uh, makes the uh the whole play at least a half stroke harder oh yeah if not a whole stroke Okay, I got a little excited there. I thought he might throw another one in. I, right. I don't know. <laughs> Emerson. Just laying up. Austin doing the same. Smart move in this uh in this condition on the basket. Oh. Uh, or you can just uh drain it dead center. That works yeah. out too. That is a great putt from Coda. About circle's edge. And little basket tap. Building that course karma. Both a nice party as well. Yeah, no slouch either. And then Emerson, that's... <laughs> uh, honestly, that's a tough, uh, that's a tough putt for him, I think. I mean, yeah. you're just, you're putting straight up into, yeah. into wind that's probably going to kick you back out if you hit too high. Yeah, exactly. All right, hole nine, this is a par three, 333 feet. This hole has out of bounds wrapping around the right side and behind the basket, and then you have the road on the left side that plays out of bounds. So uh, these guys are gonna be playing a low skip shot up to the basket. You wanna hit just past this tree that the drone flew by and uh, take a little skip up to the mulch near the basket. Yeah, you're not really trying to throw anything too fast. You don't want a huge skip because the OB is, uh pretty close behind the basket, like right about 35 feet or so. And this green tends to give a lot of rollaways. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's right on a mound. There's rocks surrounding it. And, I mean, it's really easy to just roll OB. Yeah, we yeah had a guy on my card roll OB. Yeah. And that needs Speaking to Speaking of sit. the rolls, here we go. That should be fine. He'll have... A lot longer of a putt than he wanted. Do you know what Austin's throwing there? Uh, I am not sure. Looked like some kind of mid-range of some sort. Just yeah, it might have been a drone. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, 
Oh, that was some unfortunate wind bounce right out of the hand. Yeah, that shot it straight down. Yeah. He's I mean, he got some decent skip off of that, but not nearly as close as he'd like to be. Yeah, that's layup zone all day. Behind that basket, it drops straight off, and you have the OB behind. No use in running that. Coda, I'm sure, just laying up as well. I mean, it is so easy to go from a two look to a five on this basket. Yeah. The the minute you don't can the putt and hit that metal and your disc comes off in any kind of angle, yeah. like, and that was pretty, that was pretty fortunate yeah. not to roll away. But with a par, and we're gonna go birdieless on this hole. That was very surprising from the feature card. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, this is this is one of those ones that you you step up to it and you think, okay, well, uh, as long as I throw a decent shot, this this needs to be my must get birdie at least. Yeah, exactly. Especially with all those par fours. Right. So you you just came off of a huge par four streak. Yeah, exactly. But uh, that's going to conclude the first round front nine coverage. So far, we've got Coda Hatfield and Emerson Keith tied at the top at three under par. Austin Hannum only one stroke behind at two under par. And Bo Tillman at one under par. So uh, some good golf from these guys. Hopefully uh, we can see them continue the streak they got going here. Uh, yeah, also a big thanks to uh, Native Disc Golf, Legacy, and uh, DGA. And if you guys like the coverage, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next round.